Hi, I'm Frank Dolan, Jr. of All for Sports and Fitness, and tonight I'd like to share with you our next episode of our video coaching series. Tonight we're going to go through our core 101 exercises to make sure that when you go ahead and go through your program, you have your body in proper alignment, proper position to get the most out of your program and make sure you don't get hurt. Some people think of the abdominal position as being one of uh, hollowing out, pulling your belly button into your spine. Uh, I tend to be more of the camp of a, a guy, back specialist named Stuart McGill, who talks about bracing the abs and almost like somebody's going to throw a punch. What that does is it creates um, more, a little bit more stiffness and it also doesn't alter your breathing as much as hollowing out your abdominals. So when someone goes through an exercise, whether that be a squat, a row, a crunch, or any, anything functional, or even machine-based for that matter, it should be a core exercise. If you engage your core, embrace your core, and think about neutral spine, all the things that we're talking about tonight, you will feel your abs when you do a press, when you do a pull, whether you're se se sitting in a chair or not. So that's the one thing I want to make sure you guys really understand tonight. So the next thing we want to do before we go to machine-based training is show you how you should be standing when you go into more free weight-based lifts. The thing you want to always think about is keeping your shoulder blades down and back. Whether you're in just a standing straight up position when you're walking around day to day or when you're actually in the gym working on a treadmill, you should always have good posture. You should also always think about it when you're doing, say, something like a row or a pull down. You should never be in a bad position with your upper body. So shoulder blades back and down, again, bracing with your abdominals, and then making sure you don't tuck your pelvis underneath. I think that's really common these days because people sit down so much, you get weak glutes and tight hip flexors, and you tend to kind of sag your hips underneath, where um, when you go ahead and sit back, like I'm going to have Patricia do right now, you want to try to stay as long as you can from the top of your head to your tailbone and sink your hips down and back but always maintaining that good posture, right? So if she was to do a row from this position, from a cable, or if she was to do uh, even just a squat in this position or any kind of overhead thing, th she has protection of her spine in this position because her glutes are behind her. She's not tucking her pelvis underneath. To take all of our core 101 concepts and bring them into machine-based training, we're gonna start out on a lat pull-down machine. Taking the same idea of standing on the floor and maintaining good back position, good lower back position, and good hip position. Patricia's gonna go ahead and reach up and grab the uh, arms of the machine and make sure that she keeps her head in alignment with her shoulders, in alignment with her hips, and keep that natural curve of the, sp of the spine. Now remember I mentioned before about every exercise, even if it's a machine-based exercise, being a core exercise, she can still tighten and brace, and brace her abs while she goes through the movement. So she'll pull down with her shoulder blades first to pull through the back movement and right back up nice and slow make sure she's breathing the whole time but again maintaining that posture and sometimes in the gym you'll see a lot of guys and girls getting going all over the place with this exercise so I felt it was important to make sure you understood keeping that spine position keeping tight and bracing your abs is gonna number one protect yourself but also get a lot more you'll get a lot more out of the exercise this way so turning maybe a non-functional seated exercise into something that is functional. And I'd really love to see you progress into something where you're on your feet. Although I don't want to go through every single strength training exercise with you in the circuit, uh, what I do want to do is go through at least two. So we're going to move from the lat pull down over to the seated bench press. What Patricia will do is start out holding a neutral grip. I'm a fan of the neutral grip a little bit more than the regular grip because that's a little bit more of a natural position of the shoulder. If you are going to put your, your hands in a fixed position on a machine or a bar, I think it's probably a little bit safer on your shoulder if it's a neutral grip like this rather than like this. So with that being said, what Patricia will do is again focus on all those same core concepts that we spoke about before, keeping space between her lower back and the bench. That's probably the key here. Sometimes people load up a ton of weight and they crush their lower back into the pad when they press. If you think about it, that's like generating a lot of strength, but usually in life you don't have something to push against. So what's gonna happen is your core is gonna really just not be working while you do the movement. So tightening up and bracing her abs, she's gonna push through the range of motion of the machine, maintaining her upper back contact to the board and lower back off the board.
Now that we've finished our core 101 progressions, you should have a better understanding of where your torso needs to be in relation to your shoulders and your hips, whether that be during free weight exercise or during machine-based training. If you are training on machines now and you're interested in training a little bit more functionally, please visit our website at allforsportsandfitness.com and search our fitness boot camps. I'm Coach Frank Dolan and I'll see you at the gym.